Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about tips for independent study of medical billing and coding. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. Lately, I've been getting lots and lots of emails asking me the question, I want to learn medical billing and coding, but I really kind of want to skip going to a traditional trade school or an online school. I just want to study on my own and take the exam. Can you do this? The answer is yes, you can do this. The great thing about medical billing and coding is that they do have entry level medical coding credentials that you don't have to have formal education for. And there's two major medical coding associations. There is the American Health Information Management Association and the American Academy of Professional Coders. Both of them have their entry level credential that does not require you to go through a formal program. With the American Health Information Management Association, it is the CCA or the Certified Coding Associate credential. And with the AAPC, it is the CPC. When you first get it, it will have a dash A at the end. That just means apprentice. They have a two year commitment, um, like where you're working <laughs> in order to get that A removed. It just says that you are brand new. Um, there's ways of speeding up that two year process. Uh, you can go with your experience in coding and you can also do a program on their site called Practicode. Practicode is an educational program. And once you complete that program, it will um, be an equivalent of one year of coding time, okay? This does not mean one year of experience uh, that you can put on your resume. That's not that. This is an educational product. Although when you do start looking for jobs, sometimes they will allow you to you know, use your educational experience as experience in lieu of, right? Uh, experience, they allow you to have your education on there. So it really depends on where, you're, where you are applying. That said, um, the first thing that you have to do if you are going to study on your own for one of these credentials is decide which credential you want to go with. The reason that I say this is because it's going to, the associations are different in how they do their test. With a HEMA, the CCA is a two hour exam, okay? It's a very complicated exam for only two hours, all right? <laughs> and with AAPC, it's a five hour and 40 minute exam. So be sure to keep these thoughts in mind when you are deciding on which association to pick. Um, just because it's two hours with the CCA does not mean that it is easier, okay? Uh, they're, they're both equally difficult exams, so you want to make sure that you are pacing yourself when you are studying, okay? As far as like how to look through the book and things. I will be leaving a whole list of books that I recommend for medical coding, medical billing and coding beginners on how to learn from the books, right? So the books that you're going to need is the ICD-10 CM book. If you're learning right now, you're not really sure when you're gonna take your exam, you can study with the 2020 versions, okay? The 2020 versions are on sale. Um, currently, as of this date, <laughs> I believe they're still on sale, uh, but of course that can always change. If you check out Optum360, coding.com. This is the site that I love. They have lots of sales. And if you go onto their website and you uh, register for your account, they do have lots of really good discounts and they have so many helpful books for medical coders. Now this is not an ad for Optum, but this, these are the books that I use. I love these books. I trust these books. They are very comprehensive to me and they have got lots of really helpful information. That aside, <laughs> I do recommend that you take, uh, that you get the ICD-10-CM book. And like I said, if you're studying this year and you don't know when you're going to take your test, just get the 2020 versions and learn on those, okay? So the 2020 um, ICD-10-CM book and the uh, CPT book, you can actually go with the expert edition. Now, you cannot take the exam with the expert edition, all right? I will just say that. Um, it is just so that you can help you learn, um, but it is not the book that is required for the exam. Both AAPC and AHIMA require you to have the CPT professional edition by the, by the AMA. So the one that I'm recommending, it is cheaper just to get you guys to learn, okay? Uh, and I know that people, when they're trying to study on their own, 
they want to go the cheapest way. So I'm letting you guys know. <laughs> CPT Expert Edition. And you need a Hicks Picks book. Uh, and that is just for your durable medical equipment and bandages and things like that. But it will give you something else to learn as well. So if you're going to learn it, you may as well learn it. So you need those three. ICD-10CM, uh, the CPT Expert Edition, and the um, Hicks Picks book. If you're, going to, if you're going to go for an inpatient credential and you're trying to learn inpatient coding as well, uh, then you'll want to get the ICD-10 PCS book as well um, because that is all your inpatient procedure coding. Now, there's lots of step-by-step -step books out there on how to learn how to code these things, the breakdown and things like that. A lot of it is going to be just basic reading and sort of comprehending what you're reading and then practicing looking up codes in the book. Obviously, if you are studying on your own, this <laughs> may seem like a lot, but it really, after a while, you will start to understand once you go through the guidelines. Uh, there's quite a few videos out there that are demonstrating. I do have quite a few videos in my collection where I'm demonstrating how to look up diagnoses in the book, how to look up procedures in the book, so you can take a gander through my videos. Please look through the videos and um, check out my older <laughs> videos. I have over 400 videos and they weren't always <laughs> with uh, the, the camera the way it is. So there's a few in there. It's you got to forgive my early <laughs> my early work. So but whatever, it's still a good example anyway. So when you're uh, trying to learn and practice through the book, then that's when you'll um, you'll start to understand what's happening and it'll, it will get easier the more practice that you get but you got to get the workbooks so there's lots of really good um, icd-10 um, cm workbooks out there i will leave links to my favorites down in the script down in the description box below uh, that way you guys have some reference to look at uh, you will also have to make sure that you know your anatomy physiology and medical terminology now with this, you can get any book, any set of flashcards that you want when it comes to anatomy, physiology, and medical terminology, because let's face it, the body has not changed. They have not discovered anything new. <laughs> uh, you can go to Goodwill. If Goodwill or a thrift store is open in your area, right now I know we're on COVID, um, but if there's a, a local thrift store that is open, take a gander through their books and see if they have anything about medical in there. And that way you can save some money, go through the books and just sort of work that way. When it comes to what you have to know uh, about medical terminology, anatomy and physiology, you have to have the base foundation. You have to have a really good base foundation, which is why I tell you guys when it comes to medical terminology to learn your prefixes, your suffixes and your root words, because you're not going to have to sit here and memorize thousands of words. I don't know why people do that. Um, but you're not going to have to use every single one of those words in your career. Okay. So the thing is you have to know the breakdown of the words so that way you can put them all together because when you're able to put them all together, then you'll know many words because you know, the prefixes, the suffixes and the root words, you can just sort of puzzle them together and figure it out that way and figure out what they're talking about <laughs> that way. So, uh, Another thing I will say, and I'm going to keep reiterating this, if you are studying on your own, this is me as a veteran medical coder and as somebody who truly cares about the people that are in this field. Do not get into a Facebook medical coding group, whatever you do. Facebook medical coding groups are filled with lots of people with varying backgrounds. Sometimes you get into these Facebook medical coding groups and people will complain. They don't understand it. No one's explaining it to them. It's a scam, blah, 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 all the way down the line. Every single complaint that you could possibly think of. They can't find a job. There's many reasons why people cannot find jobs. If you are wanting to study independently, you really have to be very focused, like laser focus on your studies. Try to limit what you are listening to as far as like other like in these Facebook medical coding groups if you're coming here because you're trying to look for resources that's great because <laughs> I love talking about medical coding uh, I, I invite you to continue to watch my videos um, 
independent study is going to take a lot of discipline. So what you want to start your learning is um, medical terminology, anatomy, and physiology. Start with those three. Spend some time on those. When you feel like you've gotten a really good foundation, like you can name all the bones, you know where the organs are in the body, just a base foundation, then you're, you're able to move on to the next thing. Then you're going to have to study about, then you're going to study on <laughs> um, HIPAA, the OIG, which is the Office of the Inspector General. Lots of really good information on that website. Uh, CMS, they have the uh, Medicare Learning Network. Those three websites you have to hit up and you have to look at them. You have to read them. Download their free resources on there. Go to their frequently asked questions and read, 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 because you have to know those things. Um, uh, Office of the Inspector General, HIPAA, and um, CMS, okay? Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. I will leave all of these links down in the description box below. But this is also part of your studies. So learn all the medical terminology, anatomy, physiology first. Then work on your HIPAA stuff, HIPAA, OIG, and CMS. Get familiar with the regulations. Get familiar with all of the laws and things like that. So that way it's not going to be so foreign to you. <laughs> and then when you are out in the, um, getting your exam, you have had practice with all of these websites. Um, you can get the practice, practice exam books. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Oh, I can't talk today. All right. Go with uh, the practice exam books. There we go. <laughs> and um, but just know this with when it comes to the practice exam books, those questions don't expect them to be on the exam. A lot of people will write me and say, I got this um, practice exam book and none of those questions were on the test. They're not going to be on the test. No one knows what is on the test, but the associations themselves. Do you know how many people would be passing these exams so easily if the questions that were on the test were in those practice exam books? Got to think about that, guys. And a lot of times these uh, practice exam books are, are written by other authors. So there is just a, a format to prepare you for the exam. So that way you can work on your speed. You can work on uh, your organization how you're looking through the book okay so once you've gotten past uh oig and uh hipaa and cms um, you also want to look for an insurance reimbursement book uh, just to sort of get you familiar with that as well uh, if you haven't already run into a lot of those terms on those three websites um, you can it will help you there's lots of really good ones out there. I'm going to look and see if I can find one that I can recommend and I will leave it down in the description box below. If I don't leave it, uh, I will probably leave it in the community tab later on um, when I have a little bit more time to, to check out <laughs> some of those other books. And then moving right along. So then that's when you can break out your books. All right. Now I recommend on the first three and then the second three that I was talking about, that you do three months, three months, three months, three months. That's nine months. Okay. That is a comfortable pace. You're not trying to rapid fire, get through it. Whatever you do, guys, don't try to rush when you're learning. Well, I just want to get a job already. And you know, I don't want to, you still have to pass the exam. And if you pass the exam, you still have to take their um, assessment test when you go to apply for these jobs, because they have to know what you know. And if you have independently studied, um, you're really going to have to make sure that you put your best foot forward because you, you don't know what they're going to bring up. OK, uh, but hopefully all this time will have prepared you. All right. And then, like I said, then on those last three months, you're going to start busting out with the code books. OK, you're going to start reading the guidelines, the ICD-10 CM guidelines, the CPT guidelines that are throughout the book. And um, uh, the Higgs Pigs does have some notes in the book, but it's not, uh, you'll, you'll pretty much understand. It's very basic and straightforward to work with the Higgs Pigs book. The one you really want to concentrate on is ICD-10-CM and the PCS book. That, and not the PCS book, but the CPT book. 
if you're studying for the PCS as well, um, that's going to tack on another month. Okay. So comfortably you can work a month on these. Um, that way you can really get familiar and start to work on your speed and really start to work on your understanding of the guidelines and how to look up codes in the book and how to uh, apply these codes and what you're reading. There's lots of really good coding workbooks out there. I do have my Patreon channel and I have lots of coding exercises, a lot of um, crossword puzzles that I make for, for medical terminology. So that's an option for you. This is a really good resource because I do a lot of scenarios and then I break down the rationale on how I got to this answer. Um, I am going to start doing more demonstration videos. I haven't done a whole lot of demonstration. I don't think I have. I'm not on Patreon, but I do break it down in the narrative, <laughs> which is much easier than trying to put it up on the screen. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not very advanced when it comes to this, but to the screens, I will start to do that eventually. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's, it's really good. There's a lot of value there. So, um, I do... The diagnosis workouts, I do the procedure coding workouts. So that is always an option for you if you're interested in that. And the pledge level start at just $1 per month and you get access to all of that. There's also annual memberships now. So you can pay for the entire year and not have to worry about it. And you get a 10% discount if you do. So just an option. Um, but getting back to <laughs> the topic at hand. If you are um, reading the guidelines in ICD-10-CM and you feel overwhelmed, oh my gosh, I don't understand what this means. I don't know what they're saying. My advice to you is to keep reading it. That is the best thing that you can do because it's not going to make sense. I will tell you right off the bat, it is not going to make sense. You're going to be like, <laughs> I know I was like that when I first read them, but you have to read. And once you start reading, the more you read it, the more it will start to click and make sense. But you have to be consistent while you're reading. And when you're consistent while you're reading, it's going to make things a lot easier because your mind is going to get used to absorbing this information. These are the guidelines. These are the rules. And so, okay, now I understand this. Now I understand that. And then you can go from there. However, um, you, you best learn if you need to write out flashcards when you're working on those ICD-10 CM guidelines, then that's what you have to do. Write out flashcards. Well, is there any that I can buy? Um, not that I've seen for the guidelines because the guidelines get updated. So, uh, you can write these on your own. Flashcards are amazing. I will always recommend flashcards <laughs> and people are like really blue these flashcards. Yes. The flashcards work because the more you're writing, you're writing and you're connecting your brain and a physical action. And when you do that, it commits things to memory a lot easier. So like I said, big undertaking, but it is entirely possible. You just have to be disciplined. And one other thing too, when you're, uh, when you're going from ICD 10 CM and then you're going to go to the CPT book, right? And you can start reading the guidelines for evaluation and management and for surgery and for anesthesia, read everything. So that way you can start to really fully understand. Same thing if you're gonna go ahead and study the, um, the inpatient procedures, uh, read that uh, ICD-10 PCS book as well. They have the guidelines in the front, um, they have notes in the front. So you really wanna check those out. Uh, but like I said, optum360coding.com is really where you wanna go to get these books and especially right now because they're really cheap right now so um, hopefully when you go <laughs> there's still a sale going on because uh, as you know these videos live on in perpetuity so um, it may be different when you go but just know that this is a very worthy and very good website to get coding books from not only that they have other coding books that are very helpful for medical coders so it's a candy store. I love books. So I will freak out every time I go to that website. I have to be very careful because I will order. I mean, I will <laughs> because it's just very helpful to have these books on hand. But again, if you're trying to study on your own, it's a really good start because those are your coding books and that's what you got to learn. But yes, be consistent with reading when it comes to the, um, the guidelines. So that way 
It's not going to be so difficult for you. And then when you have done all of those things and you have done the workbooks that you've studied with, then take your practice exams. And then when you're ready, go and take your certification exam. And know that all the energy that you put into this is going to pay off once you get that certification in your hand. So uh, it's good to cut out the middleman as far as like going to like a trade school or something, because it's not always going to be a guarantee that you're going to get quality education anyway. I have seen and heard many horror stories about people who go through these trade school programs and they literally get no education. They just get the books put in front of them and said, here, learn. I had that. Uh, I learned, <laughs> but I'm a reader and some people need that explanation. And it's totally understandable. Like I said, that's why I have my Patreon. That's why I do tutoring. So that's always going to be an option for you if you're interested in doing that. Um, and reading about reimbursement is also really important. Okay, so just make sure that you read uh, about those things, different insurance companies. Um, there's lots of really good information on the big insurance company websites like Blue, Blue Cross and Aetna, things like that. So Cigna, you may want to check those out, okay, uh, just to see what their website has to say and things like that. And maybe you'll be able to learn some extra things along the way. Just oh, an idea. <laughs> um, let's see. That's pretty much all I have, but make sure that you get yourself on a schedule. If you are going to do this, then you need to make sure that you get yourself on a schedule because it's really easy to be excited about it. And then if you don't have like that uh, accountability for yourself, it's really easy to sort of lose track of your goal and what it is that you want to do. We are coming up into a new year, guys. Uh, 2020 is almost out the door. <laughs> We're at the beginning of November, but this month is going to go by so quickly. And then we have December and then all of a sudden it's going to be boop, January. So January 2021. And if that is going to be your time to start in a new career or start, start fresh in a new way of learning something so that you can have a new career, then you really start to need to start getting that discipline now. Okay. Uh, so that way you can meet your goals and get where you want to be. And if it is um, that you, you wish to be in a career that you love, if you're an intellectual, <laughs> this, this is very good for intellectuals. And the weird thing about it is you don't even have to go to college to, to work around so many highly intelligent people. And you can take a certification exam on your own and still be able to do this career. And that's how exciting it is. It is very unusual. This is a very unusual field. <laughs> um, and it takes different, all different kinds of personalities to do this. And there's people that want to do this because they wanna work remotely. Eventually you'll be able to work like full on remote right now because of the pandemic. Everybody, if you're, if you're applying at a place you have to go, nine times out of 10, they're gonna send you home right now. Parts of the country are opening, parts of the country are still closed. So it really depends on what's going on in your area. But if you're looking at this to try to immediately apply for a remote position with a remote coding company, uh, chances are they're not going to pick you up because remote coding companies want people who have experience. But if you have to go to a place where you have to physically go and they send you home, they're going to understand that they're going to have to spend a little bit more time with you because book coding and real world coding it's two different things <laughs> it's not impossible to learn this and it's certainly not impossible to get a job but um, it is something that you have to keep in mind when you do finish your certification and you get out into the real world okay so i just wanted to make sure that part was clear so yes i'm going to be leaving lots of really helpful information in the description box below. I will also leave the other video link about this topic that I did before. So that way, if you're interested in seeing what I had to say previously, which is probably gonna be about the same as what I said today, um, it's been a, quite a while. So I know sometimes these videos sort of kind of get buried <laughs> and I wanna bring it out again. So 
uh, just check it out if you uh, are interested. If you got any value out of this video today, I hope that you will share it with your friends, share it with somebody that you know, share it with somebody that is just curious and doesn't know where to begin uh, on the independent study track. I hope you will share this with them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider, or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye!